It's Kansas. It's West Virginia. Who's going to say goodbye to the season? That's what it's going to feel like after this one on this Locked On crossover episode between Locked On West Virginia and Locked On Jayhawks. You are Locked On West Virginia, your daily podcast on the West Virginia Mountaineers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On your first listen every day. And if you're new to the show, thank you for joining us. Uh, Of course, make sure you subscribe to the show anywhere you get your podcasts with either Locked On West Virginia, Locked On Jayhawks, one of our plenty of Locked On shows, Big 12, Locked On College Football, as well as on our YouTube pages. Mountaineer Paul, Derek Johnson with you here. Locked On West Virginia, Locked On Jayhawks, respectively. We have a couple of one and two teams that are going to be going at it here And uh, this one should be very interesting. Before we get into all the action, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, where you can get $5 bet, turn it into a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com, download America's number one sportsbook today, and check that out. So uh, we're going to be getting into on today's show, the matchup between these teams, key players, keys to the game, who wins, all that and more. Uh, so I guess first things first, uh, Mountaineer Paul, th- this is a game that, you know, coming into the from the preseason, two teams go nine and four a season ago, two teams who figured to be maybe dark horses in the Big 12 title race this year. That has not gone according to plan for either team, both sitting at one and two coming into this game. It feels like to me this is the opportunity for really a new season. You hear the cliche, hey, everybody's zero and zero now in the Big 12 and all that sort of stuff. Whoever wins this game is going to feel that way. That it's like, hey, this is a new season. Whoever loses, I think you're kind of just going to get trapped in that same old, hey, things are not going well this season. Two and two versus one and three. It's it's one of the craziest spreads in a record you can think of in a football season. Um, yeah, it's going to be a brand new season for whoever wins. And it's going to be gloom and doom for whoever loses. Two wounded dogs, two quarterbacks that have not performed up to the expectations of the fan base to coaches who have underperformed via the fan base. And there's a lot riding on this game because the coaches are telling both of these teams, hey, look, we can still we can still get to Dallas. And both teams had that goal before the season. Yeah, and so when you look at from the West Virginia side of things, I'm curious, like what has gone wrong? What has kind of changed from where things were supposed to be at the beginning of the, of the uh, season? Yeah, man. So obviously we nine win team, you know, you try to ignore the the wins we had last year because they were against inferior opponents. We had one of the easier schedules in the big 12. Once the season played out preseason, TCU looked good. Pitt looked good. Texas tech looked good. You know, all those teams looked like they could be good before the year when the play turned out, they were not. So we look back now and realize, okay, we beat some average teams to get to that nine win mark. But you still buy in and believe because it's a nine-win season. Should have been 10. Hail Mary lost to Houston. So you're thinking, okay, we legitimately should have won 10 games. Thought we had it turned around, man. You know, Garrett Green gets all this preseason hype. And I've, I've never seen a game hyped up in my time covering West Virginia like I had that Penn State game. McAfee was there. Big Noon was there. And the very first snap of the season is a bubbled snap. The center shoots at about – 100 miles an hour out to Garrett Green, fumble. That was a horrible loss for us, and I think nerves were a huge factor. Garrett's never righted the ship. And then defensively, just to put it really simply, we went out and got six transfers to fix that back end, and not one of them have worked out. Not one of them yet. So that's been the worst issue. It's it's the worst big play issue I've ever seen. I don't know if you saw the pit highlights or the game, but <laughs> – we were the better football team, and we still lost the game because our secondary couldn't make routine plays. And there's certainly some interesting stuff we're going to get into there and as part of the keys to the game. From really the Kansas side of things, it, it's been like the running game has been just as good as, as advertised. Maybe the totals haven't been there because they haven't had as many sustained drives. The defense has actually been better than any of the last couple of years. Probably so far has been the best defense of the Lance Leipold era. Haven't really made any special steam mistakes, at least as of yet. That's been an issue in the past. Really, the one thing that hasn't gone well has been passing game 
and the quarterback play. And it's so odd because Jalen Daniels was such a good quarterback when he played, when he wasn't injured. That was really the big question in 2022 and 2023 in the back end of 2021. We haven't seen that guy this year. He's thrown six interceptions. Obviously, West Virginia doesn't have one defensively, but like you have – the team who's thrown the most interceptions in the Big 12 versus the team who hasn't grabbed one, how is that going to play out? Um, but then you look at the offensive coordinator side, and I think that's kind of a big storyline coming into this game. You mentioned the Penn State game. I thought that Penn State looked good offensively against the West Virginia defense. Andy Kotelnicki, the former KU offensive coordinator, was engineering that offense. And the idea was that Kansas was going to have Jeff Grimes come in and he was going to take over a lot of what he was doing and maybe add some of his concepts and, and his flavoring into the offense, but it hasn't quite looked the same. And so on paper, when I saw the, the West Virginia game against Penn State, I was like, oh, this could be good news for Kansas because they're going to be running a similar offense to what worked pretty well. Drew Aller had a 98 total QBR in that game against West Virginia, but it hasn't looked that same. And, and now it is ultimate desperation. Uh, I think of the case of of Neil Brown, I, I remember him being on the hot seat coming into last year. Obviously, the nine-win season fended that off, but it, I, th- it's not going to be the case for Kansas with, with Lance Leipold. If they lose this game, there there is no warm seat at all. It's still totally cool, uh, and I think so. But like, would that be the case for Neil Brown here? W- would the seat start to heat up a little bit with a loss? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, some people have even speculated because after Kansas, we have a bye week, and perhaps somebody maybe ahead will have to roll. Defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie could be that guy. Um, but, yeah, absolutely. Neil Brown has to win this year, and they're up against it, obviously. So, yes, it has to be this year. I don't know to what extent Bo eligibility. We, you know, we don't know what Ren Baker's thinking. But as a fan base, we, we eight or more was what we expect to come into this year, contend for the Big 12. And most fans still wouldn't be happy at eight based off of losing just a pit already. There's a really sour taste in the fan base's mouth. So, yeah, Neil's in trouble, um, and, and a lot of people are clamoring for Jimbo Fisher. He's a West Virginia guy. He's from West Virginia. He's got $77 million from Texas A&M, and he's been a name people have been throwing out already three games into the season. Well, I think when you look at it, and this this really applies for both teams and, and really anybody in today's day and age of college football, a one and three start, especially when you had high expectations like both these teams had, you start to worry about what does that mean as a program? Like, like how does that affect recruiting? How does that affect the, the positive momentum or the trajectory of the program moving forward? How does it affect the rest of the season? Like, uh, do players stick with it and, and rally around it? Do they, they quit and there, there's a level of fall off after that? And, and I think beyond that, like nowadays with the transfer portal being so rampant, players can play four games, redshirt and leave. And um, it's happened all around the country. I mean, it happened at Kansas with Khalil Herbert. Uh, about a handful of years ago where just didn't go with the team on the plane down for their fifth game and then transferred away and ended up going to Virginia Tech. And I'm not saying that's necessarily going to happen for either one of these teams, but it just kind of illustrates the fact of how important this game is because the idea that you're one in three and lose your conference opener when that was supposed to be the new season now, your second chance, and you've got had it go away, really the season starts to fall off. And I think whoever loses this game – to me becomes more of, can you just make a bowl game? Can you just go six and six versus whoever wins this game? You're probably going to start talking yourself into, okay, it is a new season. Absolutely. I'm curious to know who do you feel is more desperate for this win? So it's tough because in theory, West Virginia is the home team, right? And and yeah. from that standpoint, you would say if, if this was just a game in a vacuum, it's like the home team needs to win more. Right. I, and I guess if, if Neil Brown is going to be on the hot seat, maybe that is your answer there. Like Lance Leipold loses this, right. that, that's not at all the case. Um, but it definitely feels like to me, if, I mean, if West Virginia is talking Jimbo Fisher, right? Like there, there could be light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know. Um, I, I think from the Kansas standpoint, there is a huge level of desperation because it, it felt like, the program finally had positive momentum and had a huge up arrow going forward. And it feels like it would be a big stalling off. And it feels like you would have questions again at the quarterback position. So um, uh, honestly, it it probably is West Virginia is the answer there for a little bit more desperate. Kansas comes back the next week at home, plays TCU. But if you lose this game, 
do you have the same level of energy for the TCU game? And, and especially for Kansas, when you look at it from the standpoint of they're building a new stadium, it's going to be up there next year. They're playing the rest of their home games in Arrowhead Stadium, which holds over 70,000 people. If you don't win this game, how many are going to show up? What is that going to be like for recruiting? So that would be the angle I would take in terms of Kansas being the more desperate team to win here, um, that it could have a real repercussions on future ticket sales. Not to mention there's always an audition. Whether it, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, every team in the Big 12 is auditioning, hoping to be in one of those other two conferences if it ever has to come to that again. So I, it's always in the back of my mind, definitely, You know that we need to be as good as we can if the chips ever fall that way. Uh, ever again. Yep, absolutely. When you look at conference and alignment and everything. All right, we're going to take a quick break in the action. When we come back, we're going to get to the key players, keys to the game, who wins, score prediction, all that and more. This is our Locked On Crossover episode. This episode of Locked On Crossover is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps you ride or die live eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof cracks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay Motors guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every day. Don't forget to check out Locked On College Football for your second listen. Thank you for joining us. KU taking on West Virginia 11 a.m. on Saturday when you look at the keys to winning this game, to me, it, it I mean, it's its hard to know what we're going to get from Jalen Daniels from the KU side. Are we going to get the 2022-2023 version? Are we going to get the guy who won at West Virginia in 2022 and really did it all with his arm and his legs? Or are we going to get the guy we've seen the last two weeks that hasn't been able to throw downfield, uh, has six interceptions this year, which leads the Big 12, had a stretch in the third quarter where he went just one of ten last week, and whose average air yards per attempt is at 3.3, which is the worst of any KU quarterback in at least eight seasons um, against a West Virginia pass defense that has really struggled this year. You mentioned the transfers they brought in. Right now, West Virginia is in the bottom 10 of the country in EPA per drop back defensively. Uh, you look at some of the coverage grades on like pro, pro football focus, they're bad. Um, that's kind of the question for me. If Jalen Daniels looks like the guy we're used to, I think that – is going to be a huge advantage for Kansas. But if he's the guy that it's been the past couple of weeks, that might be a huge advantage for West Virginia because KU might just have to try to run the football against a West Virginia defense that's at least been pretty solid, at least against the run. Very good against the run. I mean, couldn't be happier about our run defense. As a matter of fact, our front seven is one of the most talented I've ever seen. It's an odd dichotomy because the back end just can't complement what we have in the front seven. You know, and unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. We too. We definitely have the two most talented linebackers I've ever seen maybe 15 years, you know, since we've had a linebacker combination as talented as we have with former All-Pro Jeremiah Trotter, his boy Josiah Trotter there, along with Trey Lathan, the converted wide receiver who is absolutely just killing it. We're really excited about that. But, yeah, the back end has just been so porous. I think the keys to the game for me, you know, I – it's not if but when I think Kansas gets it turned around offensively. That's just how I look at it. Running game is there. Eventually, I think Daniels is going to knock the rust off. You know what he looks like to me, by the way? I was thinking about this. The only time he's ever performed like this was his freshman year when he was learning a new, new offense. And even though this is the same offense, it's still like – I feel like the a little bit similar of a situation. I don't know if there's any new verbiage or anything. You would probably know that better, but – he just looks to be thinking a lot, you know, and, and I think once he gets some of those cobwebs out, he's really going to turn it on. And I think West Virginia's got to go clock control on this, and, and they've been able to do that. They've been able to rush close to 200 yards, almost everybody except Penn State. That's just a tough – you can't do that against them, really. But I think clock control is going to be big in this game. 
they've gotten their hands on at least three to four passes that should have been picks. Their one should have been pick six last week. They've got to get a, get a turn turnover somehow. And Garrett Green has to go back to being Garrett Green at some point, you know, and I don't know how that's going to happen. Last week, our transfers from wide receiver finally flashed. Robinson, the Mississippi State transfer with a one-head catch, uh, was amazing, and he's 6'4", 250 pounds. So we really need him to come on because we we had been starting two walk-ons that had earned scholarships at wide receiver. They started their entire freshman years, uh, and they just haven't come on. So I feel like it's time for a change at wide receiver. And West Virginia is going to be starting two new corners. So uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a – he's going to have a time to possibly get on track, Daniels. Yeah, and uh, the, the turnover battle will certainly be interesting in this one. I, I You mentioned the running game and, and the controlling the clock. I think those are both important things in this game because uh, Pitt, obviously, who had success passing the ball, they like to get a little bit more tempo than what Kansas does. Kansas is more of a slower team themselves, so maybe that's something that does help out West Virginia's back end in this game and, and get more aligned a little bit more consistently. Um, running the football for West Virginia will be super interesting because Kansas, you know, they've gotten better each and every year in terms of stopping the run. The The last time these mm-hmm. two teams met, Kansas' run defense was bad. Um, it was one of the worst in the country but statistically. But you go to last year, they got a little bit better, but they still had some flaws game in and game out. And then so far this year, the run defense has been really good. And what I think is interesting is they shut down a, a bigger back in Caden Fagan, who's 6'3", 250 from Illinois. That would be kind of the comp to C.J. Donaldson in this game. They did give up a lot on the ground to Matthew Sluka, a running quarterback to UNLV. That would be the comp to Garrett Green. And then they haven't really seen somebody at least consistently like a Jaheim White. But you definitely haven't seen the combination of all three of those guys and what you're going against. So um, that'll be a big key in this game. KU's linebackers, this is probably the best linebacking core. You, you mentioned of West Virginia is probably the best linebacking core for KU with the Lance Leipold era, certainly. And I think that'll be a really fun matchup. Uh, as far as a player you think has to play well for West Virginia to win this game, go ahead and give me one on the offensive side of the ball. Give me one on the defensive side of the ball. Okay. Um, I'm on the offensive side of the ball. We need somebody at receiver to step up. I, I'll say either Jaden Bray or Justin Robinson need to step up, even though those guys are just now really getting acclimated. Those are one of those two are going to be my guys. They're both transfer receivers, they're definitely more talented guys than the, the regulars that have been playing. We need one of them to step up, and then on defense. TJ Jackson had a breakout game last week three tackles for loss, two sacks. Um, was in the backfield all game long, one of the highest graded PFF defensive linemen in the country last week. And I want him to continue that uh, and, and just stay in his rush lane a little bit better this time, like he talked about in the press conference, so that we can keep Daniels from running the ball against us because that's been a problem for us. Well, the obvious answer for me would be to just say Jalen Daniels on offense, but I don't want to give the obvious answer because it's like, oh, if the quarterback keeps turning it over and plays bad, of course you're probably not going to win on the road, right? So right. that's almost like a given that he has to at least play some level of better. I'll say on the offensive side of the football, uh, Bryce Cable do, who's the left tackle for KU. You mentioned TJ Jackson. Uh, really impressed with what I've seen from him. I think 16 pressures already this season. If Cable do can at least neutralize him a little bit, the KU offensive line has been really good. The West Virginia's offensive line has been really good when you look at pro football focus. Both of these teams rank in the top 35 on PFF in pass blocking and run blocking grade. So these are two good offensive lines all the way through. Um, so I think that'll be a really fun matchup. If he can play well, that'd be big for KU. And then on the defensive side of the football, um, I, I think you have to look at somebody on the interior of the defensive line playing well for Kansas. Uh, the easy answer would be to go with Tommy Dunn. He's coming off a big performance against UNLV. He's really flashed so far this season, been kind of a breakout player at defensive tackle for KU. West Virginia, as good as the offensive line has been, now all five players have graded well by PFF, but the highest graded players at the offensive tackle positions, a little bit lower on the interior, even though they still do grade out well. Uh, if Kansas can get a little surge on the inside, that would help slow down the running game. And I think Tommy Dunn would be the guy that, that can uh, certainly help do that. All right, let's finish things up with our predictions for the game. Who wins, why, score prediction, all that and more. Crossover episode with Locked on West Virginia and Locked on Jayhawks. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get in on the action between KU and West Virginia 
Uh, I think Garrett Green over under rushing yards, 44 and a half. That's interesting. KU has given up a lot of rushing yards there. You heard Mountaineer Paul talking about giving up a lot of rushing yards to opposing QBs. Well, Jalen Daniels is only at 29 and a half. You can get those and plenty more over at FanDuel. But also right now with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three free week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is Google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com, download America's number one sports book, and you can also get that awesome promotion, and there's a bunch of boosts and bonuses going on this weekend. That's FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, thanks for joining us again. Again, you can find Locked On West Virginia and Locked On Jayhawks anywhere you get your podcasts including on your YouTube page. And both of us will have uh, some reaction shows after the game at some point this weekend to uh, let you know, or on Monday or whatever, to let you know what's going on and uh, what happened in the game. So uh, I guess let's start here. What does West Virginia need to do overall to win? And what is your prediction of if that happens or not and what the score ends up being? Yeah, I, I do think they need to run the ball this game. You know, you had three seven hundred yards or more rushers from last year. They're all back, uh, and, and they really, really just haven't put a complete game together. You know, when you think about who we played and, and how our offensive line has still graded out, considering we played two Power Five teams and an FCS team that was, you know, in the almost in the national championship game last year, I really think our offensive line is is still able to carry this football team. I, they've got to continue to do that against the defense. I really like on tape. I love Kansas defense the, on the edge, especially really athletic guys, really long. It's just not even what you would have seen 10 years ago. Unbelievable. The turnaround that's been made there. Um, and, and then obviously Garrett green has to become Garrett green and actually run with the ball a little bit. He just hasn't been killing teams. And, and you know, people have been running that cover one really, really spying him. And I think, He's got to figure. They got to figure out a way to scheme that up. Like you mentioned, the kid that you guys played earlier in the year, that's got to something's got to change with Garrett and his running the ball because that's where he hurts people. I don't know if we have anybody to go deep, you know, because Garrett had 31 big time throws last year, none this year, none. So I mean, I don't think there's anybody that can really comp that we can get down there like we'd had last year. So unfortunate for that. So for me, it's got to be Garrett, the offensive line, the running game. It's, like I said earlier, control the clock. Uh, I do like West Virginia because we're at home. Um, I think it's going to be a really close game. I'm not going to pick against them, not this week. You know, I, I really feel good about this one because of Jalen Daniels. If he was playing well, it would be a completely different thing, but he's not. So I'll go West Virginia. It's got to be high – it's probably still going to be high scoring, 34-31. So the over-under on FanDuel, 57.5. Kansas getting 2.5. Money line plus 105. Money line for West Virginia, minus 126. Um, so I, I guess the the key, Kansas wins this game. I, I think if Jalen Daniels plays like vintage Jalen Daniels, they win this game. I think if Kansas doesn't turn the ball over, which would probably be because Jalen Daniels plays better, they win this game. Unfortunately, the last couple of weeks with five interceptions and six overall in the season for Jalen Daniels, and an inability to, to, I don't know, be cohesive with the new offensive coordinator. Um, I guess I should have asked you along the way here, how's the West Virginia defense at stopping receiver screens? Because KU loves to do that with the new OC. <laughs> uh, I'd say they're average. You know, uh, yeah. they, they have some tackling issues out there, but um, they, they do have a safety. It's One of the safeties has 22 tackles on the year, Anthony Wilson. He is not good in coverage. But, but he, you know, I would consider a screen technically coverage. Um, so I'm sure if you guys have worked it, they'll be ready because Jordan Leslie talks about tendency all the time. He's a big tendency breaker. You know, he loves to break his own tendencies and loves to play to the tendencies of the other team. It's insane. Okay. Well, that uh -oh. probably doesn't bode super well for Kansas. So um, when you're looking at this one, uh, I think that'll be kind of the key here. Uh, but I am going to actually go with West Virginia. I think if it was a game that Kansas was playing at home, I would be picking the Jayhawks. But because it is in Morgantown, I'm going to take West Virginia to win this football game. Uh, we'll go with a final score of 27 to 24. 
All right, well, that's going to do it for our episode here today. You can check out Mountaineer Paul, Paul Locked On West Virginia. You can check myself out, Derek Johnson, on Locked On Jayhawks. Give him a follow at Paul Mountaineer, myself at D Johnson Radio. We'll see what happens. Should be a fun one. And uh, I guess whoever wins this game will feel like things are anew. It'll feel like spring, even though we're getting toward fall. Appreciate the time, man, and uh, good luck over this weekend and the rest of the season. You as well, Derek. I appreciate you for coming on, man. All right, and we'll see you next time on both of our upcoming shows with the Locked On Podcast Network.